Man, I feel like we can already just go home now because, I mean, after the praise and worship, I mean, you guys, we are so blessed to have such an awesome praise and worship team, and Josh and the youth, Elizabeth, all of you guys, just thank you so much, and, uh, and just the presence of God is just so strong here. And I was gonna, where's Kenny at? Kenny, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Where you at? Where you, when you said that God was really wanting to uh, release his glory upon the churches today. I mean, that's the message today is God's glory. <laughs> and I can feel, I can feel his glory up here. So, you guys, wow. So I'll try to make it through the message. But, um, but just to talk about Rafa just a little bit, you know, Jesus, he wants to do something here in Shawnee. And he wants to, what he wants to do, he wants to walk down the streets of Shawnee and he wants to heal Shawnee. Um, and I just kept seeing him just walking through the streets and healing. He wants to heal the oppressed. He wants to heal the addicts. He wants to heal those that are hurting. There's so many people in our city that are hurting. And, um, and he just wants to release his glory in this city. He wants Shawnee to be whole. He wants the body of Christ to be whole. It, it, I think we have been sick for so long. The body of Christ has been just down. And he wants to raise up the body of Christ for such a time as this, a glorious time that we're going to enter into. Will you do me a favor, guys? I don't know if it's the glory of God or that light right there. <laughs> It's really shot into my eyes. <laughs> Thank you. But he wants to really just, he wants to walk the face of this earth. And, uh, and that's kind of what my message is about. So I'm kind of new at this, bear with me. And, uh, but God has a message today. <sighs> and what I think that he wants to do today, and I've, I've just been feeling this in my spirit all day, for this hour, he is wanting to raise up. He is wanting to raise up people in the body of Christ for this hour that we're about to enter into. And he wants to use us, and it's on a scale individually, but it's on a broader scale. I believe that he wants to raise up the body of Christ in all its glory and all its splendor to be the the body that he has created to be, to function in the power, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what he wants to do in this hour. I believe that he wants to raise up forerunners to carry his glory to the, to the ends of the earth. And the hour that we live in, to be honest with you, the world, you just have to look around, you see that it's dark. You know, it is dark. Um, and Jesus, he said, know the signs of the times. He said, know the signs of the times. I'm not here to preach gloom and doom, but I do believe that we're moving into an hour where things are going to happen. And I believe the earth is start, starting to experience some birth pangs. I mean, I, I just, you know, we're feeling, we're having birth pangs. And we know, Shaylin knows, and I know, <laughs> all the ladies who've had children here, the later it gets in the birthing process, the more intense the birth pangs. And I believe the later in the hour that we, or that we get into, the more strong the birth pangs. You know, we see that. It says, he says nation will rise up against nation. Kingdom will rise up against kingdom. He said that there would be earthquakes, famines, pestilence. I don't know where this is coming from, but I think that we need to be watching and we need to be alert. He says, you know, he says, look at the seasons, look at the fig tree, look at the seasons, you know, look at what's going around. But I do believe that um, the darker things get, the darker the earth gets, I believe the more his glory is going to shine into those dark places. And that's where we come in because he's going to show up. He's going to show up in all his glory and he's going to push back darkness. Amen. And today I'm telling you, he wants to raise up forerunners to carry his glory to the darkest place of the earth. And who does he use church? 
He uses us, he uses us. Whatever he is doing, I wanna be right in the midst of whatever he's doing. And he wants to raise up people in this body, not just this body, but on the face of the earth. Perhaps this is the fire in the middle of Oklahoma that he's talking about, but it's the glory of God that is going to penetrate the earth. And amen, and I'm just, I look forward to it. So, I want you to turn to, uh, Second Chronicles 16.9. And I've got New King James Version. Are you there? You got it? Yeah. <clears throat> it says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. I'm gonna read the uh, Living Translation. It says, the eyes of the Lord, they run to and fro throughout the earth to show his great power on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. And I believe that God is just wanting to show his power. And not only is he wanting to show his power to us, but he's wanting to show, he's wanting his power to manifest through us, through us. And I believe that this is the hour that we're moving into. And he's calling the church to be that glorious bride that reigns with him. There's so much that he wants to do. And he's calling the church to be the Ephesians 1 church. Full, just to know his riches and glory and his inheritance in the saints. And what is the greatness of his power to those who believe. He's calling it. And I believe that there is an awakening happening in the church. I really believe. And if you kind of listen, I mean, I could just hear it like all week. I mean, there's like a rumbling. Like I could feel like brick and mortar just falling. I could just feel, I could just see the church. It's, it's beginning to wake up out of its sleep and out of its slumber. The church has been a sleeping giant. It's been sleeping and he says, wake up. He says, wake up. I hear trumpets over the church. He's saying, wake up and arise. He's saying, arise. He's saying, church, arise. And the church is waking up and is shaking off all the lethargy. It's shaking off all the religion. It's really shaking off all the unbelief and everything that it's held it back. Held it back. And once it arises, I'm telling you, the gates of hell won't be able to stop what the church is going to do when it arrives in all its glory in this hour. Amen. But there's, there's something else with this message. This is not going to happen until. It's going to happen because it's already been prophesied. Okay, but the church needs to first get revelation. <laughs> we need to get revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus and what our inheritance is in the saints. And this is what Paul is preaching in Ephesians 1.15, that the Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling and what are riches in the glory and the inheritance of the saints and the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. We need revelation, guys, of who we are. And some of you guys, you do have revelations. You know who you are. You know who you are. But I think where the body of Christ is right now, we know who we are, but we've kind of forgotten. We've kind of like put it on a shelf. I, I really feel like we're not moving out like we need to. And uh, James, we don't have to turn to this, but James 20, 23, it says, it's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. He observes it and looks away and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. 
And that's what I want to remind you today, guys, not to forget who you are, that you are sons and you are daughters. And God is just speaking that, that you are sons and you are daughters, you are children of the Most High God, amen? That is awesome, that is awesome. Okay, if you want to turn to Romans 8, 8 19. Take a little sip of water. I get kind of worked up. A lot of you, you know this scripture. <laughs> it says, for the earnest expectation of creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. <laughs> Creation is just waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. And I kind of put in there when I was meditating on this, the sons of God, he put in the sons of glory. <laughs> that you, not only are you sons of God, but you're sons of glory. And we're gonna dig in more to the scripture where he says this. And uh, creation is waiting for it. And, uh, and they have been revealed. I mean, they have to a degree been revealed when the disciples, when they walk the face of the earth with the Lord Jesus in his power, doing the greater works, they have been revealed to a degree. But you know what, guys? God is still writing the story. He is still writing the chapter. There's still things that he wants to do. He's, he's still calling his sons and daughters to greater things. And he is just looking for someone that has ears to hear what the voice of the Lord is saying. He wants to use anyone that, that wants to be used. Anyone that wants to be used. And he is calling us up. He is calling us up. The sons of glory. You know, <laughs> this whole room is filled with sons and daughters of glory. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're a son of glory. <laughs> you're a daughter of glory. <laughs> if you're a woman. Uh, but uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18 2 Corinthians 3.18. All right. It says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding in the mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into that same image from glory to glory. He says that when we look into the mirror, do you know when you look into the mirror, it says we are beholding the glory of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. We are a reflection of Christ. 1 John uh, 4, 17 says, as he is, he says, so are you in the world. As he walked, so should we walk in the world. We are a reflection of Jesus uh, that that's just deep. I don't think we know who we are. Because if we knew who we are, I feel like we would be moving out into the things that he has called us to do. Sometimes we get intimidated. And God doesn't want us to be intimidated no more. Enough is enough. There are so much things to do in this city. There are so many things that need to be done in this earth. And who does God use? He uses us. And a lot of us are waiting on God. God's waiting on us. You know, he, he is waiting on us. He's already released everything needed for this to happen. When you got born again, the Spirit of God came into you. It says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. You are sons and daughters of glory. If, if there's anything that I want you to remember today is who you are, who you are in Christ Jesus. We are kingdom carriers. Okay, I have another scripture for you. Um, and more about the sons of glory, check this out. So let's turn to Romans 8, 29. And um, I think I'm using New, New King James. No, wait. 
New Living Translation. Can you do New Living Translation? I like how that's, that's cool about these, all these different translations. You can kind of pick the one that you like that, <laughs> I'm joking, <laughs> but they're all basically saying the same thing. Some of you guys believe Jesus uh, spoke, new King, spoke King James and then that's all that you read. Some of you older people. I'm jagged. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm not looking at anyone, not you, Pastor. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but when I read King James, I get confused. It's like I have to reread it like four or five times. Like, <laughs> Jesus did not speak King James. If you think he did, he didn't. Okay. I guess he spoke Hebrew. <sighs> okay. Romans <laughs> 8 29. Okay. All right. So it says, should I read it like that? Okay, it says, for God knew his people in advance, and he chose them, he chose us to become like his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him, and having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. I wanna break this down just a little bit because I think it's saying more. Let's just kinda dig into it. It says, okay, God chose you, and he knew you in advance, and chose you to, to be like his son. Okay, Holy Spirit, help me to, to do this, okay. Okay, so God, Father God, he, he knew you in advance and he chose you to be like his, so Father God chose you to be like his son, Jesus. And it says that, we, that Jesus is the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So Father God chose us to be like his son, that we are to be like, that we are uh, brothers and sisters and he's the firstborn, it's almost as if God is kind of saying, well, he is saying this, that we are just like Jesus when he walked on the earth in the flesh. In fact, he calls Jesus our brother and Jesus calls us brothers and sisters, almost like we got, we're on the same playing field, Jesus in the flesh. Do, do, did you get that from that scripture? that the same spirit Jesus has, we have, and we can walk in that same glory, amen? And that's what that scripture is saying. And he says he gave them his glory, amen? Okay. And why did Jesus give us his glory? Do you guys know? That we be like him, but also, and there's several reasons why. There's not one particular reason why, but I believe that well, one reason that we need his glory and we need his power is for the greater works that he's called us to do. The greater works that he's called us to do here on earth. He's called us to greater works here in Shawnee. You know, he's called us to greater works. Uh, if you could turn to John 14, 12, and I'm not sure what translation. Oh, New King James Version. I'm going to take a drink. Okay. Everybody say, okay, yeah. Say, most assuredly. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> it means, most assuredly, <laughs> you can have confidence, he says. Okay, he says, what does this version say? It says, I say to you, but I like this version. See, I'm picking a trans the translation that I like. <laughs> he says, whosoever, whosoever believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. He says, and greater works he shall do because I go to my Father. He says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it so the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen, he says, so the Father may be glorified in his sons. And then he says, he says, again, he says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it, amen. So, I mean, this like, like all these scriptures just, they're just, uh, you know when you read the Bible and it's like, it just jumps off the page. 
And it, these, I know these are scriptures we've heard before, but for me, this jumped off the page, for me. Okay, it says we're created for greater works. And he says, whoever believes in me, the works that he, I do, greater works, he's called, so we know he's called us to greater works. But check this out. He says, whatever you ask in my name, he goes, I will do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. <laughs> Jesus is wanting to glorify his Father. And that's why it's so important that we walk in these greater works so he can glorify the Father. And check this out. What's even cooler about this, we get to take part. We get to uh, work, check this out, with the Trinity. <laughs> Let me explain this. To glorify the Father. He includes us in his plan. Amen? So it flows from the top to the bottom, okay? From the bottom back up again then back down. Okay, so check this out. So, so God, the top, he sends the Holy Spirit to us to testify of Jesus. So he sends it to us. What do we do? The greater works are important so we could bring glory to Jesus. So, and so it glorifies Jesus. Then Jesus in turn says, you know what? I'm gonna, he wants to throw it back up to the Father and give glory to the Father. Then the Father in turn throws the glory back down to Jesus. And we are all working together just in this awesome plan that Jesus has predestined from the foundations of the earth. I mean, we are working with the Trinity to bring glory to Father God, amen? That's why it's important to walk in these greater works and I think that's why the enemy tries to stop it that's why he tries to stop it he doesn't want God to get any glory <laughs> that's why he tries to stop it and how does he stop it unbelief it's amazing how unbelief I didn't know I had so much unbelief seriously until I got sick for about, and I was sick for about three years, and I was praying, you know, Lord, heal me, heal me, heal me, and it was just, it just seems like I wasn't getting anywhere, and, um, and the Lord just began to, I'm healed now, by the way, thank, praise God, but, um, but he began to show in me just some places of unbelief, and you'll be amazed just how unbelief can stop the greater works, can stop the miracles, can stop the healing. And I wanna come back and later maybe if pastor allow me to, to talk about this, how it stops it, the, the healing of God. But that's why the enemy tries to stop it. But, but, there's a big but, he tries to stop it. But there's one thing guys, he can't stop it. He can't stop it because you know why? Because it's already be, been predestined according to the eternal purpose in Christ Jesus. He cannot stop it. He can hinder it, but he cannot stop it because we have the victory. We have the victory. He cannot stop it. He cannot stop it. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. <laughs> Seriously, we are unstoppable. <laughs> anyway, there's a, okay, so there's another scripture that I want to bring to you. Um, let's go to Ephesians 3.10. This, this out of, like, this scripture really blows my mind. It really does because it's, it's hard for me to wrap my head around, but it talks about what I'm talking about, the purpose of the church. And it says that the manifold wisdom, well, let me, hold on, let me read it from the beginning. Okay. All right, check this out. It says, this is Paul talking about the church and about the mystery of the church. It says, to me, who am less and the least of all the saints, the grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what the fellowship of his mystery is, which from the beginning of ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the church, to the principalities and powers 
in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore I ask you not to lose heart at my tribulation for you. Okay, so it says that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the church. We, let's check this, so we are to be, to make known to the principalities and to the powers in the heavenly places according to the purpose in Christ Jesus. Amen? What this scripture is stating that the church is God's eternal plan in Christ Jesus to make known his wisdom. Think about it. Think about it. Angels, you think, you know, angels probably look at the church, look at us, and they probably say, they look at us like, who are they, in a respectful way, of course, that God would make man in, in his image, you know? That, you know, they look at us, and then, that God would put his glory in us, that's kind of a mystery, I think, to the, to the principalities and powers and that whole realm. And then demons, they probably look at us and say, well, who are they? That God would put his glory in them, you know? Who are they? And I feel like that we are probably a reminder to them of their fall. We are a reminder when a third of the demons were cast out out of heaven, you know, they look at us and, you know, we get to be with Father forever and ever and they were cast down. No wonder they hate us. You know, no wonder that they are, that they are the accuser of the brethren. So this is the mystery <laughs> that Paul is talking about in Ephesians. This is the mystery that he's talking about. There's just so much that he wants to do, guys. And we are not going to get anywhere until we know who we are in Christ Jesus. And we need desperately the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit and we need to walk in the greater works. Because, you know, God is wanting to do something here at Living Word Church. He's wanting to do something in this city. And it's up to us to answer that call. It really is up to us to answer that call. And can I walk down here? Okay. But uh, I just, because that light just shining my face. But, but um, just a lot of you guys know me from, how long, how long have I been? When did I start going here? Probably about, it's been like over 20 years ago. When I got here, <laughs> when I first came here, I was just like a little Catholic girl. Uh, you know, I went to Catholic school. Well, I walked in here and I, I didn't even know what to think. You know, like people were dancing and, you know, like the music and stuff. Even back then, and the, pla the place was crazy. I think it was Dar. I remember Dar? And we would sing, I mean, just these songs and they were almost like, Remember the one about Israel? Like, oh, there's a lot of songs that we sang. Jewish songs, but they were glorious. Oh my goodness, they were so glorious and the Spirit of God would move. And um, anyway, so I seen all these people, and that's the first time I ever seen tongues. And I didn't, like, what, what, is, what is that, you know? And I wanted it so bad. I didn't know what it was, but I wanted it because I seen how it changed people's lives. I wanted it so bad. And so, I, I swear, every call that Pastor placed, I would run, I'd be the first one down here to get it. And it, I probably came down there 20 times to receive the Holy Spirit, never got it because I'm not moving my mouth. I'm not going to make, you know, I can't make anything happen. I'm telling you, one day, one day, um, I was here and Pastor made the call for being filled with the Holy Spirit. And um, <laughs> boy, I'm telling you, at first nothing happened. And then he called like, a couple people laid, laid hands on me, nothing happened. And then he called, he goes, okay, church. He called like the whole church to, to surround me, okay? <laughs> and he goes, lay hands on this girl so she could be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit hit me. It hit me like like a freight train. I, I mean, it came upon me. I, I mean, it, it's super, I supernaturally felt something come upon my mouth. I know that's not the norm, but I couldn't quit speaking in tongues and I got 
got so filled up with the Holy Spirit, God wrecked me that day. He absolutely wrecked my life. He changed it. And <laughs> and when that happened, that's when my life changed. It changed my life. And I guess, I don't know why I'm speaking of this, but I guess there's some people here that really need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled if you don't have it. And so I started going out in Shawnee. Uh, I had a little friend, Sandra, and we, we would have little prayer meetings at the house. We'd, we went out and we just started going out on the streets and we would just witness to everybody. I mean, we even got up on the picnic tables at the park and we'd preach, you know, to two people, you know. We were just kind of weird, <laughs> you know. And, uh, but we could not contain what God had given us. And man, and that's what the church needs today. It's what we need. And and it's available to you. It will change your life. Yes, be filled to overflow. It will change your life. You need it. You need it. Um, and why do we need it? Because we need the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. It is the power of God. And God is wanting to fill you with that power. Amen. The whoever wants it. He says, freely you have given Freely I, you have received, freely give. He says to freely give it. And so for us, to, it's important because we can't walk into the greater works without the Holy Spirit. I guess that's why I'm saying that. If you really want to walk into those greater works, you need to be filled up, overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that gives testimony of the greater works. It's the one that empowers us. Um, Darcy, she called me today. It's my friend Darcy with uh, Malachi. <laughs> what was that scripture you, you said on the phone, Darcy, today? It was, uh, he, that in the last day that people would have a form of godliness but deny its power. <laughs> you know, and we see that. You know, we see so many different churches um, they have a form of godliness. They're preaching the right thing, but they deny its power. And how do they deny its power? I don't think they uprightly deny the power, but I think they stop the Holy Spirit from moving. They don't preach being filled with the Holy Spirit. I think that denies the power of it. But I want to say today that this church will never deny the power of God. We will never deny the Holy Spirit. And we just give the Holy Spirit today, we give the Holy Spirit free reign to do whatever he wants to do. Whatever he wants to do. And there's some, there's some things that he wants to do. Jesus wants to, and I believe that Jesus is here today. <laughs> and there's some people that he wants to touch today. And you're not here on any accident but he wants to touch you. He wants oppression to leave because he's a healer. Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals, he's wanting to heal you. He's wanting to heal you. Some of you guys have been oppressed way too long. And like in that song, like Joss, like enough is enough. When Jesus shows up on the scene, things happen. And he's here. He's here to heal you. Let today be the day where you say enough. Enough. Amen? Amen? <laughs> uh, give me a hug. Give me a hug. God wants to heal you guys. God wants to heal you. He loves you. I love you. No, you're going to make it. Can we stretch our hands to Angel and Liz, please? And just pray in the spirit. Jesus, I ask that you would heal Angel and Liz, God. You love them and you've called them, Father. I ask that you would just completely set them free. Break, break oppression, break Break, break off the plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We command it to fall to the ground. 
every plan of the enemy. In Jesus' name, be free, angel. In Jesus' name, Liz, be free in the name of Jesus. He breaks every bondage in Jesus' name. He breaks it off of you in Jesus' name. No more, no more you cannot have them in the name of Jesus. You are free in the name of Jesus. The anointing that breaks the yoke, breaks it off of you, Liz, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Go, addiction, go in Jesus' name. Let everything break off of you in Jesus' holy name, in Jesus' name. And if you believe you are free, raise your hands up in the air if you believe you're free. Raise your hands. Amen. We cover them in the blood of Jesus. Cover them. Cover them. Oh, he wants to heal the brokenhearted. He wants to heal the brokenhearted. What's your name? Andrea? Yeah. God wants to heal you, sweetheart. He wants to heal the brokenhearted and raise up those whose spirits have been crushed. Let's stretch our hands to Andrea, please. Holy Spirit, you know exactly what it is that she's going through. And I ask God that you would reach down with your loving hands and that you would heal Andrea, Lord, that you would bind up her broken heart, Father. And I ask that you would just make her whole, God. God, you see her heart. You see the brokenness, God. I ask God, Father, that you would just heal those broken places, God. And the Lord says to you that he has a mighty plan for you and he is there. You need to know that he is there. He has not left you. He says, I will not leave you. I will not leave you. I'm there. I'm there. You are my daughter. I am there. You need to know that he's there. He is there, sweetheart. He is there to bring healing, to bring healing. I ask God that you just pick up the pieces and put it back together, Father. Put it back together. Thank you, Lord. And I just see a new chapter, a new chapter for you, sweetheart. It's an awesome, awesome chapter in your life. And it's a life, it's just joy. I see joy, a chapter of joy and wholeness. So thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for comforting and counseling her, and bringing healing to her, Father. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit, guys. The Holy Spirit knows everything, and he wants to heal anyone here that's sick today. You know what? Jesus got it covered. There's nothing. There's no sickness. There's no disease. There's nothing that he can't heal. It doesn't matter if it's cancer. It doesn't matter whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Jesus is not afraid. He's able to heal anything, and he wants to do that. And so uh, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm just going to wrap this up, but um, one more thing. (laughs) And I want to, Jisoo, Jisoo. (laughs) <laughs> this is a Jisoo from Family of Faith. Um, what I wanted to say is I seen you earlier, and you have a pure heart. You have a very pure heart before God. And it says that the pure in heart shall see the Lord, that you have such a purity. And I just want to encourage you just to guard that purity. They really guard that. He has placed a pure heart in you, Okay. And that's something that's really special and it's hard to come by in this day and age. But um, so I want to play a song. There's a song that I really I heard this morning and it kind of goes along with everything that we um, preached about today. And if we could play that um, from Jason Upton. And I just want you to um, listen because God is wanting to sing this song over you as individuals, but he's also wanting to sing it over corporately, the body of Christ. And so I'm going to play this song, 
and just picture the Lord. If you could just still your just focus on what God's trying to sing over you, okay? And then we're gonna do an altar call, okay? Mm -hmm.